such a struggle every day such a struggle hey youtube what's up it's celine here so today i'm back with a brand new video in which i'm going to be sitting down and talking to you guys about things that i've noticed while i've been in college here for a month so yes i'm in college if you haven't been watching my college vlogs where i've been taking you guys on my day-to-day -day life here in New York City, in this crazy, adventurous city. Um, yes, I moved to New York City for college, and I'm currently in my dorm room, sitting down to talk to you guys. And yes, I'm a little sick, and I'm also kind of like really overheated right now, so sorry about the appearance and the sound of my voice, because I sound like a frog croaking, at least I think I do in my head. Well, I was really excited to come to college because I figured, hey, I'm going to be in such a diverse city, and I'm going to be in a city where everyone thinks differently, and everyone's ideas are very different from one another so I was very excited to come here and listen to what other people have to say about the world their views their opinions whether it be on politics or just in general on social media I was just excited to see what everyone had to say and funny enough I actually came to a school where people are very like-minded here so uh, in a way everyone kind of thinks very similarly and they have pretty much like the same ideas which I was not expecting but I think it has its definite downsides but it has also its benefits as well Obviously the benefits are that you can meet a bunch of people who are very similar to you and have similar interests because if everyone's thinking very similarly um, when it comes to politics, when it comes to like economic issues, like it's pretty easy to meet new people and make new friends. But if someone you meet um, has completely different ideas than you, then it may be harder to befriend them. But at the same time, those are the best kind of friends because you could have really engaging, involved conversations with them. So I don't really know what I was expecting. I think I wanted to meet people who had completely different ideas than I did so that way I could just hear different ways of life and just hear um, what other people had to say about the issues that I felt so strongly about. Another thing I noticed that I didn't think would be that big of an issue but I think it is an issue is that Clearly, not every room has TVs. I don't have a TV in my room. Most people I know don't really have TVs or have um, cable in their rooms. So it's harder to just flip on the news and just see what's going on in the world. Like you're actually going to have to, you know, turn on your phone, maybe go on Google and like search what's going on on CNN or NBC or whatever news source you listen to or read about. But a lot of people haven't been listening to the news, they haven't been reading the news. And for, as someone who reads the New York Times every single morning and checks it on my phone every single night, it's just so crazy to me because I'll be talking about something like that happened two weeks ago and some people will be like, what? That even happened? So it's just weird because there's this huge delay on news, so whether it be news that's very upsetting or whether it be news that uh, directly affects everyone, some people just don't hear about it and their main way of hearing about it is on Twitter and on Snapchat, which I don't know, maybe this is just me, but I find that to be a bit concerning because Snapchat, um, if you ever, if you have Snapchat, which I'm assuming most of you do, if you go on to the story section, you could see all these tabs where different um, sources such as the Daily News, I think, um, Cosmopolitan, just different like magazine brands and just different um, papers that post very weird things like whether it be uh, romance, whether it be just like everyday beauty tips, those are the sources that are telling you about what's going on in today's politics, in today's world, and like what you could do to fix your skin. Most teenagers and preteens, they're getting their news directly from things like Snapchat. And I mean, it's not a terrible thing, especially if they're being informed about it, but it's also we have to consider how biased these things can be. Like I know that if I were 13, you know, 12, 13, and I was on Snapchat and I was just looking around and trying to figure out, oh, you know, what's going on today, my direct source of news would be, you know, on Snapchat or it would be on Twitter. And I don't know if I would think twice enough to look into it and like assume that it was right. I feel like a lot of teenagers, especially um, not even just college kids, but a lot of teenagers, like when they're looking into news like this, they just kind of click on it, they might read a quick, um, they might skim through it maybe and they won't really look to see like what the news source is coming from, if it's biased or not, or if it's even accurate, and they'll just stick to that piece of information. And the people will write the news in such a way where you'll just remember it in the way that the author intended for it to come across. Obviously, media bias can happen anywhere, and I'm just saying Snapchat is one example. It could even happen in just daily newspapers that you read about all the time. <coughs> I'm trying not to die in this video. Hold on. <laughs> Weird, because you know, back home for me, I woke up with the news every morning and I went to bed with the news every night. Um, my parents would just turn on TV channels that for the most part weren't really biased, they were pretty much neutral, and that's how I'd get my news in addition to, you know, sometimes going on the New York Times. But closer to the end of high school and obviously now, I've been making so much of an effort to see where my news 
is really coming from? Where, who are these writers? And exactly like how accurate is this information that I'm seeing? But I know a lot of people won't do that. And I mean, it's understandable. It's a lot of effort. Like I find myself getting kind of tired just like fact checking everything and seeing exactly um, how accurate everything is. And because you don't have TV channels here that you could just kind of like, you know, flip through and watch, it's harder to get your news, so obviously you might not want to keep up with it, especially if you're not interested in the news to begin with, because there's so many people that, you know, could kind of care less about what's going on in the world, which, I mean, that's a whole other issue, but there's a lot of people who just won't look at those things to begin with, so when you have an absence of TV channels, when you have an absence of just news sources that are accurate and um, are written in a non-biased way, then it just makes it that much harder to stay in tune with what's going on in the world. I mean, like I said, I'm very interested in the world news, I'm not just where I live, but just all around the world, like what's going on in Turkey, what's going on with the war in Syria, just very sensitive topics like that I'm very interested in. But again, like I said, not everyone is interested in those things. So if you don't have an immediate access to those items, even though we have internet, even though it's so easy to just look up things online with your phone or tablet, many people don't use that because, you know, they just don't feel like doing it. They'd rather go on Twitter, they'd rather go on Facebook, they'd rather just, you know, take a selfie and post it on Insta. But again, with my current environment, this is all, this is a personal video, like just for me. I don't know if everyone else college is like this I really don't think so but because I go to a school where everyone is pretty like-minded in their ideas and it just so happens that they pretty much align with my views too I'm not really complaining too much but uh, I just was wondering like what it would be like to go to a place where everyone had different views on things and that we could have like a really great engaging conversation and forums just talking about like what we think about one particular issue and just see what everyone else has to say about it. But I mean, with the internet, it's so easy to do that. Like, it's so easy to just go on a blog post and just see the comments and then have really engaging discussions. So I mean, I've been trying to find really cool blog posts and really cool websites that let you do that. So if you guys know of anything like that, please comment down below because I'd be very interested in reading about it. Anyways, that's it for today's video. I hope this made somewhat of sense, but it's just been something that I've been noticing. So comment down below if you have been noticing anything in the media that's been biased or what you've been noticing um, as trends in 2016 and the years past. So anyways, I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe, follow, like, comment, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye everyone!